<laughs> X-Men 97. <laughs> X-Men 97 has officially finished. If you hadn't chance to watch it yet, uh, uh yeah, we'll talk a little bit spoilery, but you know, it's been out for like a week now. So I think we've got a chance to get into it. So I'm excited about this series and the idea that we finally have cast uh, a well, we've I just hired a writer for the X Men's movie moving forward. It's great. Again, it just makes me have this whole idea about how we might be merging these two worlds of X Men '97 and the X Men movie. I'm just saying. I know I'm gonna keep saying it on here because it's in my mind with the yellow Wolverine suit, Hugh Jackman's rocking, looking very similar to that yellow height chair that uh, he had Cheerios on in, in Multiverse of Madness, Professor X. I'm I'm very excited about this. And X-Men 97 did not disappoint. The last two episodes were fucking phenomenal television. It really was. Phenomenal cartoon, but television on top of that. Just a big bombastic ending that left us wanting more. And the, and the audience and the fans out there are saying, when the hell is more coming? They're like, you have to be patient, they keep saying. Because season two is done. They're working on season three, four, and potentially five. This gravy boat is not ending anytime soon. And it's great for these actors before that didn't have these jobs for years coming back in these roles again have an audition again sucks but again you earned it you got it that's what happens people taking over roles that people have passed away before actors have passed away have done a phenomenal job i will say cyclops was still one of my favorites he really fucking captured that character and magneto too what the fuck he did a great job as well uh, love the animated never miss an episode it's so good queen and this is such a good adaptation continuation and just like celebration of the series in general from the intro credits to the actual plot points and the deep dives and and the deep cuts and the action the episode five is still just so insane to me i know sean and i like were texting afterwards about like oh my god did you see episode five and i was like i didn't watch it yet and i, and then I saw I was like oh i see what you're saying but the last two on top of that like what they do with wolverine and oh, leaving yeah. him at the end oh man what magneto does how fierce and brutal it is wolverine tries to i'm not one spoiler tries to kill the fuck out of magneto and he was like you know what oh fuck you and and we leave wolverine in shambles at the end it's great. I'm not, I, that was a little Skeletor. I'm sorry. Uh, I knew but it. I, I, it's not gone yet. Yeah. <laughs> It's in my mind now. It's in my mind. But I just love this. And I, I watched the last two episodes multiple times now. And I just think that the way they leave it off with like, do we know who's alive, who's dead, what's going to happen moving forward? I think it's great. That that the little teaser too at the, during the, the credits with, of course, somebody else that's lurking in the shadows. It's amazing. Sean? What do you think? What does that mean for season two? And are you stoked about this as a whole? I, I honestly, yeah, I, I was super, I had high hopes, of course. I think anyone in our generation would uh, growing up watching the 92 series uh, or 95 series and uh, coming here. 92? 92. Yeah. Uh, going, going from that to this, like, yeah, I mean, yes, you got uh, really badass moments from Cyclops because he was played as such a weird guy in the first season. Uh, so justice for Cyclops, super glad about that. Uh, they gave depth to Magneto's character, which they only really hinted on in the previous iteration of this show. Um, he's a very conflicted character, uh, you know, uh, being a Holocaust survivor. Um, there's just so many levels to him, and I felt like they did such a good uh, job bringing that out in the different aspects. And Rogue really appreciated what they did with Rogue and how serious so she became after she, she got a butt. She got that butt. Uh, <laughs> but I, you know, I it was what I really liked about it is it didn't feel like the Wolverine show. You know, it gave so many good character uh, development issue uh, um, um, scenes and beats to the other cast, um, uh, other characters that I didn't miss the fact that like Wolverine was brooding in you know something right like it felt it felt really more it felt like a balanced like team approach you had a plots you had B plots you know I think there was a couple things that felt a little too forced in how the teams were split but that's fine that's gotta you know you gotta sell toys that way um, but no ending the way it did. Um, I've got such high hopes for season two. I'm excited to see, you know, how it evolves and where it goes from here. Um, you know, I think, yeah, the, the so one of the coolest things to do with Wolverine is make it a bromance with Morph, man. Um, they had some really good, uh, good, uh, yeah, some, some good elements to work in there together. So 
super impressed with it overall. Um, hyped to see where it goes. Uh, I think they, they certainly handled the source material really well. It's not every day you get to see a cartoon genocide. Um, so no. yeah. <laughs> Which we definitely got in this. Certainly went for it. Um, and yeah, I think they, I think it paid off. I, I feel like there weren't a lot of like clunches pulled on this one. Um, yeah, it was good. I was happy with it. And then like the way we left it off, uh, you know, I, I feel like we need to talk about the uh, apocalypse in the room. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just saying, you know, uh, and the people were talking about online about how they changed his look a little bit. But I actually think it's very well done, updated well for what we did in this new season, you know, and uh, it, where that goes. I don't know. Again, tie ins. We hear about the rock apocalypse may be coming in the uh, in the movie version. So maybe this is all tying in, Sean. Do you see it a little bit more? Oh my God. I really hope not. <laughs> it's, it's okay to have something just be. It doesn't have to lead to all these spinoffs or connect to this movie that came out 12 years ago. Um, you know, there's a really funny like meme going around about Marvel a couple of years ago where it was like, in 10 years, you know, Marvel stingers are going to be like, oh, hi, I'm Beepo from Blorp Blorp. And Marvel fans are going to lose their fucking mind. And it's like, <laughs> we probably would because it's so fucking obscure at that point. But I want this to be self-contained. I want this to be its own thing. Um, you know, like there's so much good source material to filter through this 90s nostalgia kind of lens. Um, some of the more modern takes on it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. It's i think it's got a chance to, to do some really cool things if they if they keep it going and, and just try and just be a tight show and not worry about the marvelness of it all so yeah i i still i well, still I'll, think though sean yeah. sorry the I one thing think. i i i know you can think all you want man i love you. i love you for that um <laughs> but i but i i also i think that the separation or the announcement of the marvel television uh, is also a subtle nod that it's okay, it might not connect, and it's okay if it doesn't. This is this is Marvel Animation or Marvel Television, right? Like, yeah. I, I feel like that could be a, a nice way to kind of keep the uh, keep the playpen separate. And it could. I just think there's so many different things that are kind of pointing towards them being in the same universe. It's just very it's very tough for me. When I saw I Apocalypse, I mean Apocalypse at the end, I was like, hmm, you know, I was like, eh, this might be some truth to be. Scorpion rumors. King in there, sure. I little saw Scorpion it. King. As long know. as you got the the stupid little mouth thing of Apocalypse. That thing is, you know, you know. Like, like that was fun. They did that. That was, fun. And that was great. Like, I'm in Sabanur. Of course you are. Of course you are. <laughs> That friggin' grill. I get it. <laughs> Thirst, thirsty Daddy, I'm going to go to you fast here. Do you think it makes sense to connect these universes, though? Like, if this is doing so well, and you're still writing the movie of X-Men. You're writing it, right? You just, they just signed a writer on, so we know it's finally moving up. They're finally moving forward. There have been these rumors about casting constantly. Do you think that because X-Men 97 is so successful, so much so we're greenlighting it for, like, multiple seasons moving forward, almost as much as they already shot initially, do we connect them? Or do you think that'd be a mistake, like Sean saying, like, let them play in their own sandboxes? Oh, we can't hear you, Thirsty Daddy. No! I can detect his sentiment, though. I, I, can, I think I heard Dillagaff in my mind, or hell no. <laughs> hell no? Oh, we can't hear him. Something weird happened to the Thirsty Daddy. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to Mike then fast. You get, uh, he's going to look at that. Mike, what do you... Same like, question. Same question. Same question to you, Mike. Should they connect them? Do you think? And I, I know you haven't had a chance to watch this yet. So, or do you see? I don't know if you, but do you think this is worth going to and checking out with all the rave reviews and the idea of maybe, maybe they will be somehow connecting it in five more seasons? Is that enough to lure you in? I'm, I'm really excited to watch it when I have the time, Brian. Um, so it's on my short list for stuff to watch uh, when I get back into the Disney streaming service here sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, no keep them separate like yes. if you've got why like, <laughs> if you've got one beautiful like property like that's doing good in its own universe like you can't you can't prop up this whole multi-billion dollar industry by like stealing credibility from this little cartoon that you're doing that that happened to be successful that would be the dumbest thing that uh, that they could possibly do uh so so don't do it let it let it live on its own like 
And it's so great to hear that, uh, what, that it's not just a Wolverine show. I like Wolverine. Yeah, totally not. I'm always saying, like, give me that Wolverine. I read, read a bunch of comics with uh, Wolverine as the, you know, the follow him where he's the main protagonist. That said, X-Men, are they're a team, baby. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, see, that, let's see that teamwork. They're it's, all, an you know, it's an to ensemble. To me, ensemble. X-Men. That, yeah, that's what it sounded like you were saying, Sean. So, yeah, it doesn't make <laughs> any sense to link this up at all. I mean, maybe... Maybe once we get into season three, season four, like you can start peppering stuff, but it's not going to be like an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. situation. And also, I don't want to have to be familiar with all this stupid shit in the theaters in order to enjoy the cartoon, like, and vice versa. So keep them separate, guys. Yeah. Uh, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good point. And they've already been dealing with that a lot, Mike. A lot. They've been going back and forth. There was a big meeting about that with uh, Bob Iger about like doing less TV, the connectedness of it, how it hasn't really worked before. So maybe not. But I, I just said Devil Advocate because there is a lot of like similar themes and stuff connecting to the 97 one with the movies that have been happening. Maybe there's taking inspiration from that, which is again, the, the 97 one ties into the comics quite a bit, right, Sean? So maybe that's also, you know, Disney and Marvel go look at their roots look at their roots and be like this works because it is connected to the comic books they more can take that inspiration without connecting the universes yes yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It, it, it's all of again it's it's taking similar or or just taking familiar plot lines and storylines together and filtering it through the appropriate channel right this is going to work in a movie this is going to be better uh, displayed or utilized on a cartoon like that's all that is and I think that's great that we're not mashing everything together. Um, X Men '97, I think, really benefited the fact that there have been, you know, twenty some odd years of decent Spider, i um, decent X Men uh, comic storylines, um, and you know, there's still tons, uh, tons left over that uh, have just not even been utilized or considered of how you would break that in. That um, I do want to point out, there was uh, the. Uh, th- there's some great uh, takes on X-Men 97 before X-Men 97 called X-Men Forever. And that posited if certain creative teams, writers, artists hadn't left the book when they did. Uh, and it's really interesting to see kind of like an alternative history of what would have happened to favorite characters in that way. Highly recommend that kind of stuff if you if you really enjoy the television show. I think it also benefited, though, too, Sean, that we haven't had any X-Men stuff at all. Like, Marvel yeah. hasn't done any X-Men yeah. things. We haven't had really an X-Men movie since Logan. That was a long time ago now. So I think that yeah. also benefits it. And it's like you're introducing on this Disney Plus platform. People just check it out at home, you know, and there's a buzz about it. It already has the following from the past. So I think that helps. People are probably showing their kids that they watched when they were, you know, when they were kids. Now they're showing their kids. I think that benefits too. Yeah. And, it's, a big, and like- it's a big sell. And Deadpool, obviously, like that has been a hit and that's great. But like I could, could totally agree is there there's just not a consistent like serious X-Men universe right now out there. And and Marvel have planted so many seeds and teased it out for too long at this point that like anything I feel like they bring up is just going to be like, well, we already have X-Men 97. We don't really need no. all this shit in the main timeline or however the hell they're going to do We've done this. So, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Thirsty Daddy, can we hear you now? What do you think? Hopefully we can hear him. Nope, he's having some oh. issues. So, um, I well, sorry, sorry, Thirsty Daddy. Uh, uh, one one thing yeah. from the... Dilligaf, uh, from the, Dilligaf oh, I heard it. Dilligaf, <laughs> there it is. In my brain, yeah. In your brain. We, we, we'll we read your lips for you, GR. GR is Just not, a, he's a like, no. <laughs> oh, there it is, there it is. I saw it, I saw it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just think though you're right. I, maybe they shouldn't do this, but I just, I see these similarities in my mind. Races that way, so what's we'll to wait and find out? They just sign a writer up for the new X Men movie. They just found somebody. Uh, no pressure. We'll, no pressure. No, at all. no pressure. No pressure at all. Yeah, yeah, maybe it'll be great. Maybe it won't. I mean, I think it's to be awesome. I think they're gonna take their time with this, make it happen, make it work. And, and not fall into uh, just rushing this shit out because they've waited for all this long to make this happen. So they're not trying to make this be a bomb. They must be successful. They can tease, 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 tease. But that movie is still quite a few years out. So X-Men 97 is great though, everybody. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, check it out. It's awesome. And I can't wait to see what season two brings.